All right, five, three, five, four, three, two, five, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, got to do it. It's a rare condition <laughs> this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. Love and tradition of the grand design that some people say is even harder to find. Well, then there must be some magic glue inside these gentle walls. Because all I see it's a tower of dreams. Real love bursting out of every scene. Days go by. Is the bigger love of the family. Yay! What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the No Chaser Podcast. I'm Tim Shantarangzu. I'm Ricky Shuck. I'm Nikki Blades. And you know what? Let's just get right into it. Yes. Today we got a special guest. Um, you know, I know we've already sung that before, but we had to sing it again mm-hmm. because uh, I got my boy here who I have, I've, I've met at uh, at events in the past. And, you know, we've been DMing each other randomly about like tequila and sauce and like different things that we find funny. And I was like, hey, man, pull up to the podcast because I think it'll be a fun conversation. Make some noise for Jaleel White. What's up, bro? I, I appreciate you pulling up to the podcast. Boom. There we go. <laughs> Where am I drink at? Where am I drink at? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, uh, Nikki Blaze, it's, it's close to you. Can you, can, yeah, well, let's have some. Oh, God. Oh. First, Tell time, me, first, I, first time poor. I, I, it's been a while. It's been a while. So, uh, you know, guys. Um, we, uh, you, you ordered me, you had sent to me a uh, special bottle of tequila, a yes. Cinco, which yes, was, yes. which was fire. How did you even get connected? You know Are what? you like a part of that or you, what? You know what? No joke. I was just having some fun, man, during, during. I was uh, watching, I was like, this uh, mask situation. I was, uh, uh, I was just having some fun actually during uh, quarantine. You know, quarantine just was messing with everybody's heads, just coming up with fun things to do. And mm-hmm. it was just like everybody was just loving last dance. And so wow. um, I had had the tequila before mm-hmm. in, uh, in Chicago with Mike in, uh, for All Star yeah. Weekend. And so um, I just, I got a bottle and like just start tagging my friends. And everybody's like, yo, where'd you get it? And then when I, and then when I got, I tasted the Blanco. I didn't have the Reposado. When I had the Reposado, I was like, oh, oh, oh wait a minute, they got something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that was it. It was literally all of a sudden it just turned into this thing. It was like, it's just, it's my favorite tequila right now. Word, word. Because I didn't even know it was uh, a Michael Jordan thing. Are we, we're just, we're sipping this, right? Yeah, sip. Yeah, because I poured it. some healthy pours there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There it is. To life, to life. To, to life, life. to recovering? life. You recovering? Huh? Yeah, I'm an addict. No, I, just like, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't drink. I never have. <laughs> Oh, it's been oh. a minute. There you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't right. know what it, I had never. Oh, great. She's. Oh, she's. She, she's recovering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It's been a while. Oh. Oh. No, so much better. She. 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 She came with the uh, the come hither lip smack. <laughs> <laughs> All her lip smacks are come hither. She can't help it. She, she got a come hither face. Everything she does. With her I lips. Have a come <laughs> face. See, I can't say that. He no, knows you. Love no, you know what? No, no, you got to come hither face because dudes find every face a come hither face. That's why. <laughs> Even when I wear a mask, it's like you. <laughs> What's your name? Yeah, so I was just having fun. I'm a foodie just like you, man. So I'm like, I'm always chasing the best of anything, mm-hmm. a sauce or whatever. It's like sometimes there's money in it, sometimes there's not. I mean, I Burgers like Never Say Die has never paid me to post at all. Yeah. But, you know, I, I can get my orders fast. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, my daughter loves it. It's literally her favorite burger. How old is your daughter? My daughter is 10. She's turning 11 in uh, four weeks. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay, so how is it being at home? When these kids are supposed to be at school, just being with your kids every day. And listen, it, this is, I'm, I'm being real, man. Like, it's it's scary right now, man. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like, I got I to gotta maintain my daughter's psyche. And I feel like when you're a father, especially, right, you can't show fear. Yeah. You got to like, you have to project it. Look, we got this. Everything's under control. Yeah. The meat's in the freezer. You know what I'm saying? What you yeah. need? What you need? What you need? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the, the, you know, what you project as a dad. And- and quarantine in particular, and even going into right now, like I got an email that says she was going back to school two weeks ago. Oh, I got God. an email yesterday that said that has been rescinded. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, I got to deal with the emotions of that, uh-huh. but then try to deal with my own stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, I think a lot of us are feeling a little uncertain right now just about life in general. Even when I came in, you're like, what are we doing? Are we doing elbows? Right. We doing whatever? Like, and I'm yeah. like, I don't want to, because I don't want to be disrespectful. Because yeah. to some people, that's super disrespectful if you come into their space right. that you didn't. You didn't ask permission. So I'm gonna I'm 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 go ahead and reveal it. I I, I think I had it. 
I think I had it. So did he. All, all black people think we had I, it. I think I had it. And in, in February, I came back from the Super Bowl, and I've never been sicker in my life. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, literally, it was like, a, it was a, why is this happening to me kind of sick? Yeah. And actually, I was very blessed because COVID had not been popularized yet. Mm -hmm. So I fought it like the flu. Yeah. So I had seven days of just like, damn, this is terrible. I mean, I even had an IV girl come to my house and get, administer IV. Word. Yeah. I just found for me at least that you know if I if I go to that that strict quick Vegas remedy yeah. like let's, let's get these fluids going yeah. you know what I'm yeah. it really does help for me and it did it actually really really did so um, you know I felt like I had it and um, I'm just happy I didn't have to have it with the publicity surrounding the COVID and the yeah. and the uh, the protest it would have got you so many likes though if you if you posted about it <laughs> you know what you know what's so funny you said that oh oh you tattle up people. No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious because I'm like who pretending? That punk ass bachelor dude did that shit. King Badge did that? No. no. <laughs> wow, yeah, Badge. Oh, wow. Bachelor. Honestly, your, your, your sitcom timing is, is crazy. <laughs> you, you were born too late. You should have done this in the nineties. Ah, shit. You'd I would. already have like three houses in the hills and an ex <laughs> and an ex wife in one of them. So right. <laughs> But uh, no, the the guy who had like uh, who had won the Bachelor or something okay. like that or whatever. But he was one of those early people that came out like around Tom Hanks's, you know, mm. coming out and was like, "Yeah, I have it." And I could just tell by the curation of the pictures, like I really doubted it. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Dude, what are you doing?" Like. Yeah. Certain people figured out quickly. If I say I have COVID, yeah. everybody's gonna come to my page. Word. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Like I don't know that cat personally, but I'm like, dog, this shit look hella fake. Mm. Yeah. I haven't seen any further outreach about it. Any further, you know, you know, uh, um, just nothing more. Bottom yeah. line is, once he the the the, the, the initial announcement came, then it just kind of just trickled off. Yeah. It was like. Nah, bro. If you had COVID, like, it's we want not, updates. I need a follow. Yeah, I need up. updates. Yeah. I need. What this happened? is still going on for everybody yeah. else. You know how are you feeling? Yeah. Was anybody else uh, affected by? Uh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Tom Hanks did. You know, he did the follow up. He did. Yeah, the, his I didn't take. I, I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't put on that level. But that bachelor dude, I was like, not Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> that bachelor dude, I was like, dog, your post was fake. That was some BS. I mean, who knows what to believe nowadays? Who knows who's doing it for clout and who's actually uh, doing you were whatever? You protesting for clout. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw some of them out there yeah. when I was out there. People was in it for the selfie, man. Don't get that twisted, man. That's I'm like, okay, for about, sure. about three o'clock, they coming for them, for, that, uh, for them Jordans, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was is I was like, you know, you would be scrolling and like, oh, that's dope. They protest and that's cool. And then they'd be like, you got, you looking a little too cute for this protest. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like, mm. I was like, you're not worried about getting shot in the eye, clearly. Like, right. Your whole outfit screams, shoot like, me. Like, you pre-gamed for yeah. the protest. He was ready, lit. Like, damn, the whole squad is coordinated for this, damn. <laughs> that group chat. So this is what we're wearing, guys. <laughs> well, shit, man, Um, you know, um, uh, I'm glad you got to, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Cause like I said, we've been we've been DMing about random stuff from tequila to to sushi. I, you know, I didn't know you was a foodie like that until you started DMing me about it. You know, I've been trying to get you on. Um, you know, uh, one of my there was a food show I was doing that I wanted to have you on, but like they they already shot the first season w where we eat like some weird shit. You know, um, I don't mind if it's weird. It's just got to be tasty. Weird, yeah. weird and intentionally nasty. That's not that's. That's a show I just don't want to be on. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> that don't yeah. sound fun. Yeah, that just doesn't sound fun. No. Out of all your, uh, I feel like you, you uh, are you a big traveler? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah I was. So used to be. <laughs> yeah, so what'd you say is like your favorite thing you've you've eaten in your travels? Oh man, I had this peanut fish dish in Vietnam, bro. Okay, peanut fish. Yeah, man, okay. it was it was it was a peanut sauce and actual peanuts mm. in it and vegetables and a fish. And they, they walked it up right in front of us. And as a matter of fact, I don't even know why they handed out freaking menus because they only had one dish on the menu. <laughs> and and just, fish. And just how many servings did you want? Did you uh -huh. want one serving or two serving or whatever of the fish dish? I was like, all right. So my man, I was one of the typical, like, you know, just like, uh, you know, West Hollywood spoiled types, whatever. And and when, it, it tasted so good. He was like, oh, bae, bae, run that back. <laughs> run that back. And she's like, what, what? She, you know, she's speaking in, 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 in broken English or whatever. And whatever. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, we need like four more of those. Like four more of those. And she's like, she's like, no, you have four. We have four. He's like, yeah, four more. No, I give you four. I give you four. Like, but she couldn't understand. We had just ordered, taken one bite, and now we want four more. Yeah. yeah. Like, she, she, she couldn't. We are greedy yeah. Americans. <laughs> we don't have four more. Uh, <laughs> she's like, you, this is it. This but that is was dog. I'm not even lying. It's one of my favorite dishes in the world. And it was a hole in the wall. Mm. Uh, we were chasing the best fun. Uh, it was uh we were actually 
copying Andy, a- Anthony Bourdain's mm. trip oh, yeah. word. in R. Vietnam, and we were going to all of the spots That's where uh, o- Obama ate, he ate with Obama, everything. That's a good food mission. Yeah, yeah. it was a great. That's a really great. good food mission. You gonna have me going to Vietnam like, uh, peanut, oh, you peanut, would, peanut fish? Peanut fish. <laughs> hey, <laughs> who, 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 who got, got the plug? Who got the nut you? fish? We'll find I'll find it for you. <laughs> where the nut fish at, yo? You, have, you haven't been to Vietnam? Never, Never been to Vietnam. Oh, uh, you would love it, dog. Man, okay. I know. My yeah. boy owns a uh, a rooftop club in Vietnam, so in in, in somewhere in Vietnam. So I've been trying to get out there, you know, once we can travel again. Bro, I'm doing bucket list shit only coming out of this thing. Man, for real. I'm dead serious, dog. Y'all gonna see a different side of me coming out of this thing. I'm like, this <laughs> This feels like halftime. We are down by 20. <laughs> and we coming out shooting nothing but threes, dog. <laughs> so did y'all really go to Paris when when uh, uh, when uh when y'all did those Family Matters episodes? Yep, we were. Uh, we were the only black show to, uh, to ever film in Europe. Wow, only, black fam- only black family show. Because yeah. I remember like, so that was when it was getting crazy, right? When y'all were like teleporting and oh, it yeah, was like, Clone. We, had, we had totally jumped the shark yeah, at that no, point. But I love so, that. I love that though. You know, again, I I believe that from you. Yeah. Okay. The problem is, and what people don't get it, we're like, well, how come you don't do a reboot? I said, listen, I am not trying to get memed up. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, y'all ruined your own meme, uh, your own uh, reboot with this whole social media thing. <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, I was even thinking the Will Smith thing that jumped off even last week and and, and Jada. I'm like, this man has the most impressive right. filmography. Mm-hmm. Any person could dream of. He is he has reached the heights of blockbuster stardom. Right. Like yes. I On love Facebook. The Rock, but The Rock, you will never catch Will Smith. I'm uh-huh. sorry. Okay. This man owned July 4th for like a oh. decade. Right. right? Yeah. Every July 4th, you had to see a Will Smith movie, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, there's a whole generation of kids that are going to look at Will for the memes associated uh, with that. Uh, I'm like, they, right? When yeah. I put it in that context, I mean, it and makes sense. I'm like... Well, to see Will Smith sitting at the red table on Facebook. This isn't an e. This isn't some big exclusive. They're no. doing an in E True Hollywood story. Like I was hurting from. I was like, Will, get out. It's get out the room. And it's, get out the room. Just say you gotta go to the bathroom. It's <laughs> <Facebook>. <laughs> and he just because well, there's a difference. Like there's a level of celebrity that certain people are supposed to be in that they're supposed to remain untouchable. Like they need yeah. to stay there. We don't need you to be. I'm real. like, you didn't owe me an explanation, no. dog. Yeah. No, your house is nice. I've been there. Mm-hmm. You're Jada's good. Like put her in a bathtub with some rose petals and y'all work that out. That's your business. But honestly, they did it to themselves. Like Will came with the did? Instagram because he wanted to be more accessible. Yeah. yeah. He, he, was he was there. The he came down. And it, it was cool for a minute. But as soon as they get a whiff and you, you're you a part of us now, yeah. let's go, meme need boy. need everything. Yo, so what oh, we're saying is well said. meme him after this podcast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let me put with my mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up and sip my tequila. I'll take that meme. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. But I honestly feel like, you know, they sleep on on uh, how iconic Family Matters and less like Steve Urkel is. Not to keep talking about Family Matters, but I think they sleep on uh, how just like important that show was and how dope huge. Um, not only that show was, but like how dope you were. Man. You know what I'm saying? You know, again, man, like, you know, me and you, we a vibe. Yeah. So it's like, I, I hate, um, I gotta choose my words carefully. I, I, I love when people... Um, <laughs> I love when people, I can detect someone's genuine and their reverence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's going to discuss it like that. Some people are going to discuss it for what it wasn't. You know, why did Judy go upstairs and never come back down? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that show was stupid. I liked Martin. I'm like, I'm like, okay, ho, 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 ho bro. Like, I don't want to be involved in that kind of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime he and I have ever bonded or connected or whatever, if you've even talked about it or want to talk about anything, it just comes off as genuine. And yeah. not everybody's like that. So because, like I said, man, social media is what it is, uh, I think there's some things that we can definitely do to dip into the legacy, and I might be working on some of those things right oh, now. Word. Uh, definitely. I, th- I know that there's some things we can do to dip into the legacy, but I have no desire to copy Full House. You know, right. My attitude yeah. is like, yo, uh, those twins didn't come back because they're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay? Don't ask me to do their show that the one that they won't do. Mm. Like, no, no, stop that. Go get the twins. Right, yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you, people got to pay attention to how people right. move mm-hmm. in this town. And it's like, that reboot is already come and gone. Mm-hmm. And they're not hiring any of those people. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes it's just better to bring back the original show and start pushing that so that everyone can see that. The reboot is never as good as it's the original. It's never good. Yeah. So I'm like, why are you setting me up for this meme? <laughs> like, I'm a, I, dude, do you understand? I would get crushed on the meme. 
No. Like this dude, like I could just feel him rob like, like can I just all be... these guys just sitting waiting. Don't do it, Jay. I'll do it. Can I just be Stefan through got all of these? Yeah. So, so let's go. I'm gonna let's remix go, the same go. song. There it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, but also best theme song out of all the sitcoms, Man. though. Come on now. They don't make sitcoms uh <laughs> really? songs like that. Yes, think, bro. Think about it. What are the greatest theme songs ever? I, I mean, come on, the greatest theme song ever is freaking Jefferson's. That is the greatest black theme song ever. Moving on yeah, up. Moving okay. on up. Okay, come on, on up. Stop. Stop. But that's, 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 a different, that's a different era. We talk about theme songs. We're we had to think about that. I had to think about the theme song. What that yeah, was. look, I know my history. Have I ever hit you with the history? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson's is... Sanford the Sun. Sa- okay, but that was... Right. There, no that more lyrics. Count. That don't count. It's just a good beat. <laughs> that don't count. It's a great beat. <laughs> 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 Who wrote lyrics to that on the show? <laughs> Eddie Griffin wrote uh, <laughs> lyrics to that on Malcolm and Eddie. Hey, 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 real quick, you know, uh, temperature's getting warm, people are getting musty out here in these streets, but most importantly, I believe in having clean options for my body, things I'm putting on my body and in my system, which is why I support companies who innovate products that break the norm and help clean up my daily routine, just like Native, okay? Native deodorant is the best because uh, it just, it blocks odor better and it's made better. Native has ingredients that you've heard of, like coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch, and it's also vegan and never tested on animals, all right? With over 10 cents, including rotating seasonals, Native has something for everyone, like um, coconut vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber mint. Your boy likes the cucumber mint, you know what I'm saying? It reminds me of a nice little mojito I'm sipping on the beach, and um, you know, it's like a nice little refreshing scent. The lady loves it as well. Native is risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S. plus free 30-day returns and exchanges, okay? And I got a special deal for y'all, okay? Go to nativedeo.com slash nochaser or use promo code nochaser at checkout and get 20% off your first order. I said that's nativedeo.com slash nochaser or use promo code nochaser at checkout for 20% off your first order. Older, you stinky, stinky person, you. Yo, in these crazy times, it's good that you guys are getting well-rested and you're getting lots of comfy sleep out here, okay? And, you know, it's hard to tell mattresses and pillows apart, but that's why I F with purple, okay? If you peel away the layers of all these mattresses and pillows and look what's inside, you will see that they aren't all created equal, okay? And that's what makes every purple pillow and mattress unlike anything you've ever slept on. The purple grid, they got this little like, uh, little little squishy grid situation, sets the purple mattress apart from every other mattress. It's a patented comfort technology that instantly adapts to your body's natural shape and sleep style, okay? This cutting edge technology doesn't stop with the mattresses. Every purple pillow is engineered with the grid for total head and neck support and absolute airflow. So you're always on the cool side of the pillow. And that's what I like to hear because your boy got some kinks in his neck, you know? You can also try every purple product risk-free with free shipping and returns, and Purple has financing available as low as 0% APR for qualified customers. And just for you guys, I got a special treat, all right? Experience the Purple Grid and you'll sleep like never before. Go to purple.com slash nochaser10 and use promo code nochaser10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash nochaser10. Promo code NOCHASER10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply. I mean, let's see. I've, if we're talking theme song, Family Matters and... Uh, the Love Boat. The Love Boat uh, was great. Mm. Uh, I like living single. Man, we uh, okay. live in. I, I'll show you why it was so great. She never knows the lyrics to the songs we <laughs> sing here, but she knew all of those. <laughs> that's what, but that's what I grew up watching. Yeah, but like, do you know Full House? No, well, there, exactly. Thank you. I just exactly. know that I know the visuals, like they were driving through San Francisco. But that's it. Yeah, you're right. I don't know it. Now Not I know Full House. Head. What is? Because I'm a theme song guy. Okay. Whatever happened? Don't give me start. Okay, okay, okay. He can't do the gravelly voice too. <laughs> it's like I need a little bit. But yeah, yeah, off the top of my head, no, though, no, that doesn't come to mind. I didn't really watch that. Like I watched other shows. Okay, I feel like those are the same dude. Fre- fresh, oh, it is the same dude. Okay. Uh, fresh Prince. Oh, I don't know. I'm talking on my ass. But <laughs> Fresh Prince, Family Matters theme song. You know what I'm saying? They're so so different. But as far as like theme songs that you remember that people know, I feel like they're they're both kind. They're neck and neck. Kind of right. You there, know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. 
So we got some questions for Stand you. Stand by. It. Oh, oh, they opened up the laptop. <laughs> I've been ambushed. This is no. We have a we have a nice laptop. No, we these, need to get branding. These on are it. nice questions, actually. These, these are from our, our Patreon uh, viewers. Uh, they got some questions for you, dog. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, can Keith, I sit back? Can I chill? You can do whatever be all you want. up on the mic. Like, no, 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 no. The no. mic moves. We, we can hear you too. Look, you can good. adjust, bring it closer. All right, cool. Yeah, so you like, loud as shit. So get it back. <laughs> far back. All right, no, cool. Because I, because I, I felt, you know, I'm saying anxious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I felt. <laughs> See, I, I got bad posture, so I'm here the whole time. Uh, Keyshawn Sanders asks, um, so uh, uh, you can be haunted <laughs> the way you've been reading these questions have been a struggle uh, because because i don't the, know how to phrase this yeah you can't be hooked on phonics while you're reading these <laughs> no questions. no it's because the people writing it are not always you know <laughs> not hooked but you're supposed to phonics. clean that up yeah. first before you open the laptop <laughs> that's how we do it here dog it's raw we don't even know what it's about to say uh you can be haunted by your past parts slash skit what is something that you've done that you would love people to recognize that they might not know about hmm Hmm. Shout out to the good questions. Take the questions. Um, I'm a writer, man. Okay. I was I, I I grew up wanting to be a sitcom writer, and um, yeah, I got to an age where I even wrote two episodes of Family Matters. Did like, you? Yeah. So again, you didn't even know that I wow. I, I wrote the uh, the Grandma episode where we had Larry Johnson on the show. Oh. Sweet. And um, I called him up personally. I went to Foot Locker, as a matter of fact, got his poster, uh, <laughs> and it brought it to the writers' room. It was like, this is the guy, and I can call him, and he said he'll do it. Uh, and then I also did the uh, New Edition episode. We had New what? Edition on the show. Um, and both of them, each respective years, were our highest rated episode. Damn, that's dope. And so I just, I thought I was going to go to school, go to UCLA Film School and come out and just be an executive producer of any show I wanted to make. Mm. And, um, you know, I've never talked about it until now because I didn't, I didn't want to ever sound like sour grapes. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you come from a position where people feel like you're privileged and you've had enough, that if you start griping about things that didn't happen for you, they're like, oh, that's just sour grapes. Yeah. yeah. And but the reality of it is, is that it's, you know, the racism is real in our business. Mm. And 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 ageism is also real in our business. Mm -hmm. So being 22 years old, 23 years old, talking about you want to create your own sitcom. Um, was like, no, we have someone to do that for you. Yeah. His last name is Epstein. <laughs> and, and um, you know, if we deem that you are popular enough, you will star in his show. Yeah. So you saying even even being who you were and yeah. starring on um, on 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 Family Matters for that many years, like people, you still got like uh, racist treatment or uh, oh, hundred percent, man. I mean, there, there's a guy that um, um, I pitched a series to uh, to Disney. That was basically a, a Puff Daddy version of Richie Rich. Okay. I loved Richie Rich, but we never knew how Richie Rich got his money. He just inherited it, right? Mm. So I was like, you know, let's let's make a black kid, but let's figure out how he got his money. Mm. And so I had a nice little spin on him remixing other businesses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's that was weird. that was kind of fun. But he was also trying to go back to normal school. And, you know, he would land in the helicopter and jump into, you know, jump into recess. And it was it was a really fun show. And, and I pitched it to to uh, to Disney and it didn't get picked up. And six months later, somebody at Disney Channel, not the studio side, but the channel side, mm -hmm. heard about my pitch. And they said, we'd like you to come in. I'm sorry, right, cool. I came in and gave them the same pitch. And they were like, boom, in the room. First time ever happened. We're buying that. I'm mm. like 24, 25 years old. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's happening. It's it. I'm about, to, I'm about to start developing all the characters that I've dreamed of in my head. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did about three passes on the script. And then um, the guy at the time who was in charge, this guy named Adam Bonnet, was like, listen, um, unfortunately, we can't use an outside animation studio. We have to work with the Disney animation studio. So I need you to walk this back across the street to the guy mm. that you pitched this to mm. who said no. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah, I like that sound. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh I'm like, oh wow, okay. This is an interesting politic. And and I did that. And um, you know, the guy walks into the room and he's got it like every every page of my script dog eared that they're happy with across the street now. Okay. And he says, um he says, Listen, it's actually a very well written script. I'm I'm shocked. I <laughs> I didn't buy your uh, I didn't buy your pitch because I didn't think you could write it. Hit you with that actually. <laughs> So he said those words specifically. I didn't buy your pitch because I didn't think you could write it. Now, listen, again, in, in the early 2000s, there was no HR. There was no Instagram. There mm -hmm. was no Twitter. 
There was no uh, means of screaming to the world, yo, 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 yo. Some super bigoted freaking Jewish guy in right. here yeah. just basically told me to my face. He didn't think that I could write at even a seventh grade level, basically, of, yeah. of what I pitched. This is a kid show. Yeah. Um, and uh, and from there on, then on, he proceeded to basically give me so many notes on the script that it changed everything that we mm. we wrote. Um, and um, when it came down to choosing pilots that would move forward, my script didn't get selected mysteriously mm. now. Mm. So, you know... I don't ever want that story to sound like sour grapes. Mm -hmm. What I would like, what I would appreciate, what would be really, really cool is for the individuals who are getting breaks now to say, hey, that guy still got it in him. I'd like to work with him right. and come join us and let's do something that's not humiliating, that's just as dope or even doper than that idea. Yeah. And let's keep it moving and never look back. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't like that sometimes I see people that are getting these, you know, now we're almost accustomed to a black person every year winning an Oscar. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from the generation when Eddie Murphy called that shit out and you can go look at look it up on YouTube and the whole crowd was like, uh, I know he's not calling us out right at mm -hmm. yeah. so nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy said right to their faces. Like, he was like, I don't know why I'm here. My agent basically told me to come down here. I'm really rich. Y'all don't give us these awards. Right. But, and he made it funny, yeah. but you could tell there was a like, there was a, a lot of truth in it. There was a lot of truth in it. Yeah. Please go look up that moment. That is a huge moment mm -hmm. for Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And I believe that he set a new path for all of us to begin getting acknowledged in that space. Mm -hmm. And not even he has been acknowledged in that space. Yep. Um, so, you know, just always remember somebody came before you, man. Mm -hmm. And like they helped pave the way. Yeah. And, and so I, anytime I get a chance to be around anybody, I remember I, the, the Emmys called me, Michael Che called me to do uh, this thing for the Emmys. And uh, they had this skit, it was Emmy reparations. Okay. It was And it was dope, and they were giving me like a reparation Emmy, right? Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right, I got a good sense of humor. This is hilarious, and Michael Che gave me that. Marley you Gibbs, definitely should have won an Emmy. Marley, Marley, I don't have to say I didn't have to win, but damn, I didn't even get invited to the show. <laughs> Shit, I, yeah. I just wanted to taste yeah. the food. I just wanted to taste <laughs> the food. I just want a swag bag. Right? And it was like, and, I, and Marla Gibbs did it too. And so I ended up going to a party that night that uh, SNL threw, mm. and Marla Gibbs was there. And it's like, for me, it was really cool kicking it with Michael Che, Marla, Marla, Marla Gibbs, and Lauren Michaels. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, I was sitting in this, this circle of legacy yeah. that was like, yo, if it, and I did an episode of The Jeffersons. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't have even imagined that I did an episode of The Jeffersons as a kid and that I would go on to become somebody that could sit next to her even in this moment right here, right? Like, how dope is that? Yeah. So anytime I get a chance to give it up to people who came before me, Will Smith, anybody, seriously, like, I just I do, and I and I want to I want young people to remember like yo use YouTube to to also go back and and and, and explore the people that that, that paved the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's dope, man. That's like uh. So are you are you still writing and pitching like now? Yeah, I'm still writing. You know, I, it, pitching is a, is 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 pitching is dicey. You want to be careful who you know how you pitch. They're, right. They're, uh, and the I'm reason still trying to get used to that. No, and the reason why is because and just keeping it real is that you know a lot of these companies have overall deals. Mm -hmm. So. If the money is already allocated to several writers that are on the books, mm -hmm. sometimes your pitch could just be a nine o'clock or a 10 o'clock or a three o'clock meeting that justifies their existence. Ah. They have no intentions on buying from you at all. Mm. But if you're namey That's enough, to know. but if you're namey enough to, to make them look cool coming through their doors and sitting in their lobbies and drinking their water, mm -hmm. then, you know, you can end up on a circuit. I remember I had a pitch. I mean, this pitch was fire and I had it in my head. And it was just, I was practically reciting it, like, just like, you know, it, like rote memorization at this point. Yeah. And it was just like, every day, it was new line today. It was, it was search like the next day. It was so-and-so and so-and-so. And everybody's very polite. I don't have anything bad to say about any of the executives, but I definitely picked up on the, you know, um, the intern with the notepad that was taking all of my notes and the, you know, well, we'll talk it over with the team and get back with you vibe. Mm -hmm. And um, they're... There's another level of business beyond that, and you have to learn how to tap into that mm. because that sale that I did get at Disney, it was basically sold before I even entered the room. Mm. And and I almost had my pitch pitched back to me in right. that room. I'll never forget it. And it was almost kind of like, why am I here if you it pretty much bought? Okay, shut up, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. it was like, it, it, it's a... 
It's a dicey game, and you don't yeah. you want to respect people's time, and you don't want to waste your time either. Now, y'all know me. My skin has always been trash, but if you notice, it's been looking all right lately, okay? That's because I've been effing with Lumen, all right? Your skin has needs, and if you want to look as good as possible for as long as possible, you need to address them now, okay? But there's a company that's taken all the guesswork out of it for you, and that is Lumen. All right, Lumen is on a mission to help give men the amazing skin they deserve through high quality expert created products delivered right to your door. It's not just about looking good, it's about feeling good and your boy feels good, okay? You need good skin health, especially as you get older to prevent long-term damage. Even if you have no idea where to begin, Lumen makes it so easy to find the right skin management system for you, okay? And you deserve to look and feel your best. And here's where you start. Go to lumenskin.com slash no chaser to get a one month free trial of everything you need to start your skincare journey at home. That's lumenskin.com slash no chaser to get your first month free. Lumenskin.com slash no chaser, okay? There's so much about that side of the uh, industry that I'm not familiar with. Like, I just learned that I'm supposed to really, like, have a good relationship with my agent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but see, you a hustler's hustler. And that's why I'm here. Because you a hustler's hustler. I'm trying, bro. Like, I, in my head, I was like, okay, cool. I got an agent. She's going to hit me up when we got some work. Let's get this work, right? But then I didn't hear from her for a minute. And somebody was like, Tim, you know you're supposed to be, like, you should be talking to your agent like every day. Take her out to lunch or something. I was like, word? It's like that? It was like, yeah, I talk to my agent like every day. I was like, what? For real? I thought I was like, oh, yeah, no, she's going to hit me up when we got some work, when, we, when she got some money for me. That's yeah, it. Got too many clients. Yeah, but it was like, make nah. them remember you. But there's yeah. different kind of agents, too. And you, so you have to understand also, are you talking about just a talent agent? Yeah. You know, that send you out on auditions? Well, a talent agent and, like, you know, for different, like, you know, brand deals or, you know, everything. Yeah, but still, there's the, certain agents have certain skill sets. So, like, yeah, yeah, I have a, my manager, like, his skill set is sending me out on auditions for premium stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I won't audition for just anything, uh -huh. but audition is a real part of our business. And if you want the role, you will audition. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's not the digital dude. Yeah. He's not the brand guru. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he's not a packaging guy. At this point, I'll take anything. Like, I tell my agent this. When they like, he said, I'll take anything. Whenever, <laughs> whenever they hit me up, whenever they ask me, would you be down for this? I'm like, as long as I'm not playing a nerd or a kung fu expert wow, i just took that to the heart then, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No, because so been, listen it's been, been great so guys well. uh, but no i'm gonna head out no here's the I'm thing gonna... you forget i'm asian so me we've we've always been nerds on the screen you feel me so i'm trying to not do that because like i'm not trying to be a stereotypical role you feel me so that's why i tell them as long as i'm not playing i'm not playing like a fucking math asian math or nerd tech, you don't want to be or, tech. or tech yeah yeah or or like something like that i'm like can i just be a regular if you have me audition for a regular person then i'm down you know what i'm saying like and as long as as long as that you know that's really the only criteria i need for the part you feel me as long as i'm not the stereotype then we in there and see again like that's even as a writer you know what i'm saying like i tap into that and i love that like i would at this point in time you can't be tone deaf yeah. So I wouldn't even want you speaking in some type of like Asian dialect or something <laughs> like that, or let's put glasses on him or whatever, because right. I'm like, I got so many different friends of of, of Asian descent, yeah. period, that I'm like, look, these cats, especially if you catch one from the Bay, oh my <laughs> God, especially if you catch one of those cats, yeah. none of those cats have been aptly depict, depicted on t Not television even, right. yet. Close. Mm -hmm. Not even close, Not even right? close. So again, that's another thing that to get into about television development is people kind of have the idea that you can create what you want. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people understand that the executives that you know oversee Greenlighting, they have an agenda about what they want to depict. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's like if, if gay is in, then, then you, you pitch them a show that's about you know X, Y, and Z, and they're like, can you add G because we feel like that's in? Yeah. And I'm like, well, listen, like, I'm cool. I even wear pride socks. Like I've been to the parade. I'm cool, but I don't have a character that that helps tell tell these stories. They want X, Y, and Z. Right. 
that they, you pitch in X, Y, and Z, but they want you to add the LGBTQ. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. There, is, there you go. There's, it's kind of sad that when I watch certain shows, I'm looking for the representation. And there's times right. where I was like, yes, that's nice to see that this person is a doctor. It's nice to see that this person's right. not the criminal. It's good to see that's the criminal. Right. And so even with the uh, the LGBT movement, you know, I feel like. I like seeing their stories when they're authentic. Yeah. When I feel like their characters are forced into mm. situations that don't feel organic, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, I see what happened. The executive just forced it in there because that was hot right now. Yeah. And and his bosses said, well, we need more gay representation right. in these multicam shows that we're going to do right It seems like a checklist that they're going It's off a checklist. Of. Boom, you nailed it. Everybody in this room is smart. It's a checklist. <laughs> and it's like, yo, I'm like... I don't want to be a part of that kind of thing because the most joy I've ever had in my life, and I try to pass this on to other people, because now we have so much access to each other through all of these different devices and platforms, you must be authentic. Mm -hmm. There is no more faking it. See, Judy Garland was a drug addict. She was a drug addict before Lindsay Lohan, like a drug, 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 drug addict. But they hid that from the public yeah. because at that time they didn't have. It was in their best interest to always make her look like you know the perfect image right. uh, uh, girl in America, right. and so she literally would manage to live an entire existence on this planet where that was not necessarily a part of her persona, mm -hmm. right? So imagine that. You live 60, 70 years of your life and nobody really knows the pains that have even really hit you. Mm -hmm. Well, now, shoot, even when Michael Jordan did uh, the, the Last Dance, people were like, check out Mike's eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to drink some tequila and be like Mike. Yeah, check out Mike. Because there's another level of access yeah. right. to us mm -hmm. that, that, was, that wasn't there before. Now, that doesn't mean that Mike is an alcoholic, Right. But in that moment, somebody could have given him some Visine drops. Something. And people felt like they knew him differently. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So it was like, because of that now, I really, I'm very protective of that. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't feel, if my reasons for doing something aren't authentic, then I can't do it. Yeah. So what's something about you that people will be uh, shocked to know? I will blast you on a ping pong table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Who else and you Asian and I will blast you. Uh, Tabria Tab made Tabria. will light you up on a pink. <laughs> we got to set up that match because Tabria was serious. She came at me. <laughs> oh, and it's a girl too? Yeah. yeah. Love Tabria. That. She, Ooh, I Tabria love that. loves <laughs> ten year old Swedish chick got a hold of me. Yeah, Gothenburg <laughs> Sweden one summer. <laughs> You said what? Say that again? I say it again. This 10 year old Swedish chick got a hold of me in Gothenburg, Sweden one summer. Want me to say it again? Yeah. This 10 year old Swedish, Swedish chick got a hold of me in Gothenburg, Sweden one summer. <laughs> and she and she got you. Lit me up and giggled in between her points. Wait, 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 wait. How old were you at this point? I was in my late 20s. <laughs> in Gothenburg, Sweden one summer. Yo, Tabria and him would be, that has to happen. Tabria is I a huge, she, she loves it. it. Yeah. I wonder why they took the table. I don't know. Why did we? I don't know. That's okay. Haters. All right, let's see. We got more questions for you, sir. Let's see. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. This is an interesting question. Sammy Tran says, uh, what was the most memorable, best, and worst moment? <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll talk to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that, too. Okay. So, uh. Uh, okay, first we'll answer this question. What was the most memorable and worst moment you had on set on Family Matters? And second, did you get groupies as uh, Steve Urkel? I love it. I love it. <laughs> so listen, if you want to start a campaign for me, go ahead and start one, dog. Because I'm telling you, dog, you're a powerful dude. You don't even understand this. You're a powerful dude. Okay. The story I want to tell is, did I do that? <laughs> the story I want to... The story I want to tell is what my childhood was yes. playing that character. Please. Yeah. I want to provide voiceover, and I think that a kid should play Jaleel White mm -hmm. playing Steve Urkel as a kid. I feel like that would help some kid's career. Some kid would be discovered and move on to have a terrific career doing that. Some kid playing Steve Urkel Jr. is going to get memed up next to me mm -hmm. and come up to me 10 years later and be like, you ruined my acting career. <laughs> <laughs> okay and I'm like I hate feeling like because I'm smart enough to know that that somehow I'm not compliant I'm not a good collaborator mm -hmm. or et cetera, et cetera. so I said it on the podcast the Tim podcast <laughs> put it out there yes I have had groupies 
<laughs> yes, I have, I have had rules in place. My big rule in place when I was younger was if you asked me for an autograph or a picture, then I couldn't hook up with you. And actually, my most humiliating moment, there was a girl I was checking for, tough, and across the room. And, you know, you're making eyes and she finally comes over. And people don't understand that sometimes that when you're famous and you're making eyes with somebody, it doesn't necessarily mean they're attracted to you. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're yeah. attracted to them. They're just recognizing you. Yeah. So once you close the distance, she was like, can I get an autograph and a picture? So I said, damn, <laughs> this is not the kind of language that's going to lead to the bedroom or or children. So uh, we <laughs> So, um, I'll tell you what, I said, I'll give you my number, but, or I'll give you my autograph. Oh, okay. Uh, not autograph, sorry. I'll give you my number or I'll give you a picture, but you can't have both. Mm. And she was like, oh, can I have the picture? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? Right? So that would be a really good scene to play out in the show, right? Oh. Would that be dope? Would it be dope, right? Okay. So I was like, so I'm like, mm, okay. Just farted out my pride. Don't worry about that smell, right? But but um I gave her a picture and then she looked at her picture and she was all excited and everything. And she was like, um, well, wait, I want your number two. And I was like, oh no, 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 bitch. Oh, no, 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 bitch. No, 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 right? No. You know, and then I had to, you know, you know, kind of be the, the cool kid in high school and push back, like, nah, you right. made your decision. It's cool. I'm not yeah. that cute to you. Next. And then she was it, probably like, oh my God, my no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, exactly. No. Yeah, exactly. And so it was like, you know, um <laughs> She was like, okay, you said no, but how about Stefan? Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> ah! Right. So it was like, I also had a rule that it was like, you know, uh, girls sometimes would um they would say, I don't, you know, they would pretend like they didn't know who I was. Mm. And then and that would really bother my mom. Mm. And it would and, and, and <laughs> bother like, me, mom. She said she didn't know who you were. That bitch, I lied. I'm like, mom, <laughs> come on. She's 17. You ain't got to call her a bitch. <laughs> she's like, no, nah, she's still a bitch. She knows right, what she's doing. Right, exactly. And so, so it was like, you know, um, when I, I forgave that rule, actually, with a girl that ended up becoming my girlfriend for a right. long time. And my mom never ever, ever forgave her for that. It was like, she knew who you were when you met her at that yeah. beach. She knew who you were. She never and admitted like, to it afterwards. Right, it was like, she never admitted it. It was just one of those, you know, women can be very prideful like that. And it was just like, well, you know, obviously, and, you know, and not, I, I realized it, but not at first. And it was like, uh -huh. right, you know, that kind of crap. Like, no, no. And it was like, I wish women would understand that too, especially, man, dog. It's just like, listen, man, like, just be, just in this day and age, especially, the realer you can be, yeah. the more he gonna want you. The real you can be able to like, Nick, bro, I know who you are. What you doing here? That's normal. Boom. Like, that's right, right? Mm -hmm. That's you normally, if you that. know who they are, you go like this. No. Right? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> if you know who they are, you can be like, no. Right? So it was well, like, just, 10 I, years later, I got a lot of- name again? <laughs> you know me. I got a lot of stories like that. Not in, in Penny Hardaway was like a big brother to me. Yeah. So we got a lot of funny stories. Um, I literally stayed at his house uh, during the entire playoff run when Orlando eliminated Jordan from the playoffs, mm -hmm. and uh, but ultimately lost in uh, in the finals to Houston. I was there at Shaq and Penny's house the entire time, that mm -hmm. entire month. Like that month was like a book I should have written. <laughs> like so for real, like one month in Orlando, it was a book I should have written. I remember I used to wear, um, I used to wear, so my Steve Urkel socks would come up obviously really high or whatever, yeah. but I would be lazy at the end of a, a taping mm -hmm. and I would just throw my clothes on and then go home. And so ultimately in my own drawer, I end up having a lot of Steve Urkel socks. Right. <laughs> so what I would do though, because I wasn't understanding fashion at school. Um, you were still I, going to school? Yeah, I would go to normal school. Damn. I went to, I went to, I went to South Pasadena High School. You could get away with that without cell phones back in the day. Is that where you grew up, Pasadena? I went, grew up in Adina, baby. Oh, I'm, Dina, I'm Dina all day. That's what I say. I'm a real one, dog. Did I ain't just bringing that. you freaking hot sauce and ish. And just, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do. This game recognized game. I see you, Tim. We would have been friends in high school. Uh, you're right. <laughs> like, I think you're right. Right? So I was just like... Oh, uh, maybe, maybe lose my thought. God dang it. Urkel socks. Urkel socks. Urkel socks. Urkel socks. That was hilarious. I let everybody like, no, we not going to put it. <laughs> so, so it was like, so um, I, I I would take the socks home. And what I would do, though, is when, when the summer came, and I would wear my short sets. I would fold them half down. <laughs> and I remember I came 
I came down and I would wear Echo shoes too. I had some Echo shoes. Oh, you remember this? Yeah. So, I'm wearing, so I'm wearing a short set by a Nietzsche with some with echo, echo shoes. shoes. With the with Urkel Alice. socks. Urkel socks folded <laughs> halfway <laughs> down. It's a whole right. ass look. Right, so I'm coming downstairs, right? I'm going, we're going to hang out. We're going to go to Cusar or something, play like, you know, laser tag or whatever in Orlando. And Penny looks at me and he's just like, yo, you look crazy, man. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He was like, he, he, he turned to his assistant, Greg. He was like, Greg, <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't got no footies to fit this nigga. No like, we ain't got no footies. <laughs> right? So I'm like, you know, you got you prideful now. At that point, it was like, who cares? Like, who cares? It was like, nigga, like, no show, no show socks save your life. Nigga. You can't, you can't do this. So no joke, like, we canceled our plans. We were we were actually going to this spot, Gator World. We canceled. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 yes. You cut me off. Why you cut me off? We canceled our plans. And Penny was like, yo, for real, like, Greg, we got to take this little Negro to the mall. Wow. And we went, to, we went to the mall. And me and Penny went to the mall. We went to Foot Locker. We went to all these different uh, spots. And he was like, yo, yeah, get him knees and get him knees and get him knees. And, and, and that was the other thing, too. It was like, I had money. Yeah. But like I wasn't, money wasn't my flex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like the, for the NBA dudes who had come from the hood, ah. it was like, yo, I'm breaded like that, yeah. right? So, so it was like we were at the mall and we were spending more than normally my mom would have allowed. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at this like, oh shit, my mom's right? gonna find but out. But I'm not seeing it until as a flex yeah. until the Foot Locker guy has to like close the freaking gate because yeah. people are bum rushing the Foot Locker so much that me and Penny Hardaway are in here. Right, right. And it was like, so that's my childhood. You know, it's like, that's my, that's that was me at like, that was literally me at 18 years old. Damn. Um, you know, and that, and it was like, I remember that, that summer I got like exponentially cooler at UCLA because I had I has some footies now. And, you went to <laughs> the and then you went to UCLA? Yeah. While you were still shooting Family Matters? Yeah, man. I started. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's no. That's what I said. This is the series, dog. This is the series. That's and it's like, but it's like, you know, when you have to battle executives who have their own, you know, internal agendas, which I respect, yeah. it's like, I'm not trying to. You know, I'm not trying to do, do taekwondo with you, babe. And yeah. I, I know how this story goes. It's, yeah. it's captivating. It's mesmerizing. It's amazing. I remember at, at uh, Michael Jordan invited me to his Beverly Hills home um, after a, a run at that Jordan Dome that everybody finally saw that I grew up going to that yeah. summer. And um, I remember they had finished running. It was like him, Reggie Miller, Grant Hill was in there. Everybody, Jawan Howard. And, um, and then... Mike was pulling out of the driveway and he was like, Jay, take my number. And I'm like, well, Mike, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I had a flip phone back there. I had a Motorola flip we phone all with a big yeah. battery on <laughs> yeah. the back. Right? And he was like, take my number. He was like, yo, you got to come to the house. And I was just like, okay, cool, cool. Well, yeah, Mike, I get you. And so um, there was a girl I was trying to get at who lived in Redondo Beach at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she was she was not being cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> she was she becoming not, difficult. Yeah, she was being difficult, and so she was. <laughs> so she, and, and so I'm like, I'm thinking maybe like if I if I took her for a night by the pool in Michael Jordan's house, that right. would that would seal the deal, right? Yeah. So, right. So I, I I called her up. I was like, Yo, like, what are you doing? You know that that night. And I actually I hit Mike first. You better ask. Because I wanted to make sure that the number worked. Oh. Yeah. Because I had had a similar circumstance with Michael Jackson, and he did not call me back. <laughs> right? They, they, these are surreal stories, right? I mean, it's great. It's great. So I called it's Mike first <laughs> to see if he would pick up, and he did pick up. He's like, yeah, what's happening? He was like, oh, yeah, no, come by, man. We, we'll be at the house tonight. Cool. Yeah, but really but ball players <laughs> don't really pick up their phones like that. Yeah. And I didn't understand that the fact that he even answered the first time was Ridiculous. terrific. Yeah, and I was supposed to make the most use of that. Yeah. So now I called the girl and I'm like, yo, <laughs> friend of mine who's having a little, little get together by the pool. And perhaps, you know, you would like to have this get together by the pool. And uh, bottom line was like, you know, OK, um, yeah, what time would you pick me up? Cool, cool, cool. But I wasn't. I wasn't douche enough to be like, it's Michael Jordan's house. Yeah. Right, right, right. I Good wanted for you. To, because I wanted <laughs> yeah. to be like, I need to see how you're gonna behave in this exactly. environment. Yeah, exactly. Because it was a test. I gotta get you out of here fast, Mike. Yeah, I gotta right. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. She, yeah right. Yeah. So I didn't tell her. So she was just like, okay, I'm down to go. So now I'm excited, and then I hit Mike back, and I called him a couple of times and multiple times, and he didn't pick up. Oh, ah. shit. And so I was scared 
that I was going to be rejected at the gate. Ah. Because then that would be the dead, dead, dead. Yeah. Right? Right? So I, I never ended up at the house. Oh, what? And I want to write that episode. I was yeah. so that that, episode. wait. You that. never, you never went because you were afraid. I was afraid that they wouldn't let you in. let me in at the gate, because and I would no be with a shorty. Yeah, and then I would be like. You know, at that age, it was touch and go. Yeah. Negotiations aren't just, you know. Oh. Yeah. They yeah. aren't. Negotiations oh. with a woman at 18 aren't the same as at 28. Yeah. So you still <laughs> kick it with the girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, you know. Well, it, it turns out she was dating a running back on this freaking high school team anyway. So uh, I was never going to get anywhere. So she was going to lose her. Was, oh, yeah. No. Listen, Jaleel White had way more problems with girls than Steve Urkel. <laughs> did you wait? Did you ever talk to Jordan after that? Oh yeah, no, I'm okay. cool. I'm, 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 and listen, from I'm not I'm not about to sit up here and act like I call Mike every weekend or anything like that. But Mike and I have an amazing familiarity that even when I went to um, All Star Weekend and I pulled up on him, he was just like, "This is it's like I got all my sons here now." And I was, you know, I'm, obviously I'm very honored when he says make, makes a remark. For a second, I imagine just Mike being like, nah, "Urkel kid's calling me." <laughs> <laughs> no, back then, back then, his sons Jeffrey and Marcus were, would come visit him while he was shooting Space Jam, uh, and I remember he just like effed up rehearsal one day um, because Mike walks in with his two sons to watch his rehearse, and you know you, you typically have a closed set, but obviously if you're Michael Jordan, you can walk in on any set you want to, yeah. and he sits in the stands, and we were actually blocking our show to film the next day, oh, and so shit. the so the camera guys and everything were all on the floor, and. And I could feel it. I was just like, there's a very serious lack of concentration going right. on in our camera crew and everybody right now. It's like, because Michael Jordan's sitting in the stands watching y'all, y'all film, with his son. Y'all filmed in Orlando? No, no, we filmed in um, we filmed in uh, in Burbank. Oh, but at okay. the time, so let me clarify that for the people that are listening. Though yeah. at the time, he was filming Space Jam uh-huh. on on, on Burbank lot. Oh, uh, so his sons would come and visit him Word. when they were young boys. Gotcha. And on one particular day, he brought them to see me, who I'm sure they grew up watching on television. Right. And you know that was that's that's a dope moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a moment before Instagram that if you could have documented it, you know, you get fifty thousand likes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, those moments that you wouldn't even want to put on Instagram is just so good. Right, and I have a lot of moments one. like that, yeah. to be quite honest. I'm a little different. You know, some moments I don't like really putting out there. I can't, feel that? Yeah. I, I keep to myself, you know? So you and Laura never hooked up in real life? <laughs> See, you don't want to do it. Again, we not, we got, I don't want to, I want to tell did I do that, not the Lifetime's version of it. You know what I'm saying? I have much respect to Kelly. I don't want to, I don't yeah, want, yeah. I don't want Kelly's ears per- perking up. That's I mean, I had to ask. That's the girl who, who, who played Laura. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Kelly and I had an amazing childhood, man, and yeah. and and you know you can imagine that uh, even Darius, um, mm-hmm. you know, who played Eddie Winslow, you know, we were each other's high school. Yeah. yeah. We, how how old were you? To how old were you shooting this? Uh, Twelve to twenty one. Oh shit! Oh, wow. So we were each other's, you know, it, big moment. Oh, it's yeah. a huge moment. And I always tell people too. I was like, I tell people as like, you know, um, you don't the real shenanigans don't jump off on a set until the kids get cars. Uh-huh. Uh, see, Darius was big. A lot of people don't know this, but Darius is only six months older than me. Okay. Oh. So Darius was six one, two hundred and something pounds, and I was like five four, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and ain't and, nothing wrong with five four, I'm right? Too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and uh, but we were only six months apart in age, so I ended up com- becoming Darius's big brother on the set. Oh shit! Because I kind of like. I just saw certain moves comedically that it was like, hey, you should try it that way, or try it this way. And um, and and once we got past certain petty jealousies that I think were really more fueled by parents and adults, to be mm-hmm. quite honest, Darius and I really came to become like brothers on that set. Mm-hmm. And um, and and same with Kelly. You know, we 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 be, we became very very close in it. And and um, and, but 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 D, I couldn't drive, mm. and D's mom would let him drive to the set. When he was like 14 years old. Oh, word? Like, no permit, no nothing. Oh, Just God. because he was so big. She's like, oh, yes, yeah, my man is, my boy is big. <laughs> and he can drive me to work. So Darius was driving to work at 14 oh, God. at a 535, oh. five, BMW 535i, oh, God. you know, banging Marvin Gaye. This is what, like, this is, wow. this was Darius. So when I finally met a girl that I wanted to take out, it was a horrible revelation to me that I could not drive. Ah. Um, and I'm, fit, and so then I'm like, rushed home to my mom and was like, Mom, I have to learn how to drive. So after driving with your mom in the neighborhood for a couple of for a couple of trips, you realize I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get good enough where I can take this girl on a date though in two weeks. Yeah. Right. So I went to Darius and asked him, was like, 
hey, could you take me on my first date? Could you take me on a date with this girl? And Darius was so pimp, you know what I'm saying? They, Darius has been smoking clothes and stuff since he was 14. So yeah. Darius, you know, Darius was like, yeah, she got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's where that episode begins. You know? <laughs> Damn. You know what, man? The more you talk, uh, the more I would love to see a... <clears throat> Family Matters Grown Up <laughs> series, you know what I'm saying? Like, grown-ass Stefan and Steve kicking it together. Oh, damn, that's lit. That's oh. <laughs> Listen, I, I will say this, man. If, if if there were anybody that could write that, I would entertain it. Yeah. But, you know, again, man, there's so, there's so many politics to our business. Right. Um, it's a big risk to put on a show that's not going to work. Mm. Um, there's a show, and, um, and I won't say not going to work, but just, you know, there's a... There's a um, a big audience with their arms folded already, like yeah. right. what you got for me, instead of just you know watching yeah, well, a show to see what yeah. you get. Yeah, especially when, when there's all that nostalgia. Yeah, when the expectations you know get so high. Yeah, and, and back in the '90s, we were able to jump the shark. You know, we were able to do things with teleportation devices and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, basically, I walked into a porta potty and I came out cool. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying there's no way to justify that now with today's audience. Yeah, because right. they're so jaded. Cause exactly, because they, they, exactly. It's just like knowing Clark Kent and Superman they, still look the damn same. Same, right? Yeah. So it's like, well, and there, it was only glasses. Yeah. Only glasses. Right? You was like, nothing else. Bro, high, high key, Family Matters was like a lit sci fi show. Because <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. cloning, teleportation. Well, right. How you go? Stefan come out. Everyone's like, ooh, that's Stefan. I remember everyone else was like, but it's the same person. <laughs> when did he? We just changed clothes. Okay. That just shows you how important posture is. <laughs> All he had to do was stand, stand up, up straight. straight. <laughs> then he was hot. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, hey, hey, look, you look like fitting security right now. <laughs> <laughs> did that? I was like, oh. you got scared for a minute. Hello. Oh yeah. man. All right, we got one more question for you, dog. Um, uh, what is something you wish you had done on the show that you were on but didn't get the chance to, whether it was a missed opportunity or simply a shift in story development? That's from Jamal Johnson. Jamal, that's a brilliant question. I love people who ask me not cliche questions. I wish I had directed. Oh, okay. I didn't direct because there was a lot of jealousy on our set, unfortunately. Mm. Um, and I feel like that's probably such a, uh, as an actor on the show... To be like, I want to direct. I feel like there's so much, you know, bullshit you probably got to yeah, navigate exactly. through. But for someone's and like, yeah, let them do it. So, um, it, it it was it was there mainly was a a you know it's not a it's not a secret. There was a division between the adults and the kids. Okay, and uh, you know the adults just were always more dug in on issues that were more adult. Yeah, and the kids were more or less like, you know. We're having fun. Yeah. yeah, you know, we weren't seeing the longer term ramifications for certain things that adults weren't getting, mm. and um, mm. and so because of that, I knew, and I had the power to. That's mm. the thing, I knew that if I had asked to direct, that it would have opened the floodgates for other people to direct, mm. who were definitely not qualified <laughs> to direct. But because you did it, they're going to be like, I did it. Right now, they get to direct, yeah. and now we have several weeks of like, <laughs> so what, what the, hell? the hell is going on? All because I directed once. Mm. So I was actually, I love team sports. I'm a team dude. Oh. I have a team mentality. I was like, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write instead. Okay. So even when I wrote. Mm. Another cast member was like, now I want to write. Right. All, of, all of a sudden. And they turned in a really booty draft that was 80 <laughs> pages long that had to be freaking edited down to, you know, 40 pages. All 80 about pages? Rachel's play. 80 pages, bro. All, all about Rachel's play. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And it was just like, you know, sometimes people don't even understand that, that it was like sometimes the name on the front of a script doesn't ne necessarily reflect the development right. of the script. Yeah. You know, so... You know, politics are politics, man. And, but I do still regret not just Debo and my my way into that director's <laughs> chair you just and to saying, play nice. "Let me, let me, let me." Yeah, I wanted to play nice, yeah. and uh, I had no idea that from a, from a that I remember I um, Raven. That's a Raven, uh -huh. not Raven's home. That's a Raven. I remember um, they interviewed me. It was like a soft interview. It wasn't even a real formal interview mm -hmm. uh, about directing an episode of her show. Okay. And uh, the producers at that time asked me, did I have any tape? And when I said I didn't have any tape, meaning stuff that I directed previously, yeah. um, they, uh, I could see it on their faces. They were just not even entertaining the notion. Right. And I was like, damn, so I could have gotten my right. tape mm -hmm. through my own show, yeah. Politic, Gang, Recognized Gang. Right. Mm, damn. Yeah. 
Damn, interesting. And that that's uh is that still an interest for you, directing things? Uh definitely, but I'm much more passionate about writing and producing. Okay. I, I I'm not we've reached a new point now. Again, like I said, man, I'm a team player where you've got some you've got some guys that are so visually talented. The fact that they're even being held back by a jaded studio system that only sees dollars and cents. Mm. And we're gonna see how that changes coming out of COVID too. Mm-hmm. Because basically the movie business died on a rock this summer. Yeah. It died on a freaking rock. Yeah. There is no reason to justify making a two hundred million dollar film now at yeah. this point of right. any yep. kind. Yeah. And um, you know, uh there's no reason to justify going to a movie theater and paying $160 because let me qualify that. I have a fancy daughter who expects the seats to recline all the way back. All the way. She wants to take a friend and she wants to order nachos, gummy bears, sour patches. Uh, Slurpee. So, uh, there you go. There you, oh, so you are one of these, oh, these children I, as well. I, I, I about go, to say, she sound like me. <laughs> I go to the adult movie theaters where I must have an alcoholic beverage and my food because I, I love, eat. I love it. There mm-hmm. it goes. So any dude trying to make headway here understand. Oh, it's expensive. We must. <laughs> Start at 160. <laughs> I, and I eat a lot and I eat well, so it's expensive. And I would advise that you keep feeding her because you will get what you want at the end of the day. <laughs> truffle popcorn. Oh, 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 truffle me. Let me get you to make that noise off some food. Watch what happened next. <laughs> Ew, stop it. <laughs> is, uh, is your daughter interested in the entertainment? Is she trying to be uh, on camera at all? My daughter is hilarious. I literally just asked my daughter like yesterday mm-hmm. because of something that happened. I was like, Smile, what you, what do you, uh, you know, what do you see your contribution to the earth being? Like, what do you want to? That's a deep qu- dad. Like, like, for what? a ten year old. <laughs> well, you know, I say I'm like, you know, what? How do you, what, how do you want to leave a mark? Bottom line, so I, I hit her like that. You know, I'm like Kobe knew he had to do something. He knew he had to win mm-hmm. championships. Mm-hmm. He knew he he identified the dragons that he wanted to slay. You know mm-hmm. what I mean, oh, so that's I, that's a it, that's a different conversation because I knew that cat. Like, mm-hmm. um, but it was like, uh, but she was like, I said, do you just want to have fun? And I shouldn't have led with that because she was like. Yep. <laughs> I just want to have fun and make money. Hey. <laughs> and I, I was, was like, just going to say, if you can like, have fun ooh. and make money. She was like, and then she added, have a good job. She added that. Mm-hmm. So I don't think, you know, that's the thing about me and my life was I became particularly passionate about aspects of our business. Okay. You know, when you, when you're on a sitcom set and, and you're in between, you're in between, um, takes of a particular scene you know, all the producers gather on the floor and they try to come up with punchier jokes mm-hmm. for for a second pass and third pass as a teenager i started becoming good at that right and you know sometimes they would even pitch a joke but i didn't realize it i didn't see it as power um but i would be like i just got a better one i'm not even going to tell them what it is we're going to roll the camera i'm going to hit them with just the joke let it go yeah. and 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 then they're going to look at me like yo that wasn't the joke but it was better and it was like ah yeah. And it's going to be like, oh, right? shit, that was after the time. Okay, so I didn't understand that that was actually, that was a challenging thing to do to people who are executives. Mm-hmm. You know, at the time, it was just a fun thing that I did and it worked for me. So, um, you know, um, I, I, I basically mastered a certain set of skills that I hope I continue to, I get a chance to to use going forward in the future. But the world has changed, brother. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm... I want my daughter to be on TikTok. Like I don't, I don't really want to dance like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I tried. I can't pick them up as fast as she does. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know. So, but, but, but I respect what it is. I don't look down on it. And even that, you like with my daughter, I was like, Smile, you're a dancer. And she's like, No, I just like TikTok. Mm. Smile, you're a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so we're even going through this thing where I'm like, she doesn't realize like you have dancing capability. Right. Yeah. You can look at a routine. You can pick it up and you can follow it. That means you can dance. Yeah. She literally only sees that in relation to TikTok. Right. And it's like, damn. I'm like, in my generation, I see that as another skill set to right. add to get a job. Right. Yeah. You can act. You can sing. Yeah. You can dance. She it's doesn't the, see. She's like, no. Can you do. I yeah. can do TikTok. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Frustrated. She just yeah. wants to have fun. Yeah. She just wants to have fun and make I money. Think that's it. <laughs> it's yeah. almost like a necessity for them. Yeah. People in my age group know how to do this. They're, so I do this. I this talk, is what we do. I had a conversation yeah. with my grandma when I was in junior high because they used to memorize dances before they went to their dances. It was like the thing that they did in their generation. Everybody oh, like knew. Save the last dance it, type shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like white chicks. Wow, that's the references that we're using. I talked yeah. about my grandma, not my, not what, my choreographed dances. Yes, yes. So they used to come up with dances and then go to school and then they would all do the dances. 
we fell into the time where it was like our dances weren't really anything choreographed. We just were doing whatever. But I my was nieces, trying to grind on somebody. Yeah, yeah, we we were grinding. We were literally backing it up and grinding on people. And then my nieces, they're like five, six, and they I was best dancer in the eighth grade. So <laughs> <laughs> and I got in trouble. But I also danced hula, so our culture we didn't understand how everybody else got so pissed off. But anywho, my nieces are five and six, and they know all the dances. But their yeah. cousins do hula, and they're like. Oh, okay, cool. I, I get it. Look, oh, we're counting two. We're doing this. And then they try to combine the two. But that's also because my sister's pushing that, like pushing yeah. that on them. But for them to just get on and within seconds they pick it up, yep. it's the craziest yeah. thing. Yeah, they're you're dancers. Yeah. Like, and, and, but it's the futuristic migration to becoming a dancer. Yeah. And you have to be able to recognize that. You know what I'm saying? You're not a dancer, bro? Nah, Nick. <laughs> 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 well, I, I seem to recall. Why you out me with cameras on my face and everything Damn. like that? Everybody, <laughs> do the oh, earth. God. You know what I'm saying? All right, uh, I, I will, can sing hey. R and B croons if you need me to, though. Yeah. Shit. He a hooper though. Oh, you a hooper? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I definitely was a hooper. That was that's and that's a different discussion. I remember the uh, the grandma on my episode. Oh. I was like. Yeah. Wait. Well, it was no, like no, a no, 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 no. it was like a three on three tournament or something. Yeah, right? three on three tournament. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, that, that's not a double. That's him. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> I was tripping out as a kid because I didn't expect that. Yeah. Nah. I just. I mean, ball was always my favorite love. Um, all five foot four of me thought that I was going. To, you know, I, I could play not Division that there's One. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I love that. I love that we have two of those. I love that we have. Uh, all, you know, I, I I thought that there was room for me to play Division One basketball. That's why it's like like that. Oh, dog. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. Like I wanted to. I wanted to play, and it was it was crazy because even Lil Romeo, mm -hmm. he did fulfill that dream. Mm. But again, I saw how they treated him, mm. and because at the end of the day. You know, once you get to that level, it's about bodies. Yeah. It's about, you know, they start, they literally start measuring the length of your arm your your, ah. your your arms and and because they're 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 actuating what your impact will be at the NBA level. Yeah. So if you know you're not gonna take you're at, at five ten or five eleven, you're not gonna take playing time away from somebody who's yeah. six five, six six, yeah, and 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 can, you know, just deliver certain um you know, um, gameplay at a higher level than you. Yeah. So Lil Romeo was actually a very good ball player, mm. right? But he just doesn't have an NBA body. And I would mm. sit on the court next to agents, and they would discuss an NBA body, right? And and they would point out certain people. So I even remember when LeBron, I watched LeBron James play for the first time in Pauley Pavilion when he was in high school. Mm. Wow. And um, mm. and that was a dope game to watch. And it was just like, you know. The way these guys were just ogling his body, yeah. just like yeah, no, nah, he's he, he's so durable. He's <laughs> so he's do. he's gonna play eighty two. Yeah, he's gonna play. You know what no. I'm saying? Like they were just like they can they, measure it out. Yeah, they can yeah. literally just measure it's, it out. Like sad. we like, and, and I hate to make this comparison. I really do because it's but it's but it's almost like you know Kentucky Derby stuff where it's wow. like yeah, we know the lineage of this horse. Right. And we know what it can do. And it's like, ugh, yeah. I hate yeah. the analogy, I, but that's the way the agents yeah. and the executives discuss what do you think the combine is about? Oh, yeah. I play. What the hell do you think it's about? They're measuring all this stuff. Yeah. And I don't like it compared to, you know, the Mandingo days and and and, and slave trading, yeah. but there is an aspect of the, oh, the yeah. measurements. Yeah. That is that holds true. I played right. college ball. Yeah, so you okay? I played college volleyball, college softball, and was recruited to play basketball amongst playing those other two sports. But I got told no because I wouldn't be able to perform in another one. So every day was measuring your your jump, your distance, yeah. your diet. From the I played travel softball from the age of seven, and I had a diet plan. I had a workout routine, a diet plan, and plays that I needed to memorize. I traveled across the U.S. plane, and when they looked at me, they saw five nine and was like. We can throw you in certain positions that a five foot two girl will never be able to touch. Oh, you're a power hitter, but you don't look like one. Perfect. We're going to teach you how to do this, this, and this. So they look at you and they're like, how can I win with you? Yes. And you're never seen oh, as- Oh, you dropping gym. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. You're, ne <laughs> you're never seen as a person. You're either seen as a dollar sign for what you can contribute to the team mm -hmm. because female sports is different. The way that we get, the way that we get funding in- 
in colleges is very different than the way men get funding. So if you have a girl that's going to be able to bring people to the court, automatically they start paying attention. Ah, she's a little bit of a showboat. Perfect. We're going to start inviting more people to come to the games. Oh, we're going to start getting ticket sales. Cool. We're going to start getting more people to come and play here. Most of the time you're just a pawn. They're looking at the five-year plan and they're like, this girl can get me 10 more people to come. And so on an NBA level, you don't hit the, if you're not tall enough, <clears throat> they're looking at you like, you better be the best ever to touch this court because you already yeah. are losing. It's the reason why Isaiah Thomas was treated the way he was treated in, yeah. in Boston. You know, that guy was having all-star all -star numbers. He was putting up all-star numbers. He was, I mean, he was a, such a dominant force in their system. Yeah. But Danny Ainge just decided... I'm not giving no five nine Negro two hundred million. It's like it's like yeah, insulting. Like that's all it was. He was just like literally just cutting his steak and yeah. nice with his family. I'm not giving no five nine Negro two hundred million. Well, it's like when you know on a modeling perspective, when Kate Moss came in, she didn't fit the stare. She didn't fit the mold. She didn't fit it, and people were pissed. They're like, "This is not what we are paying for. You can't switch it up. Right. So you just got to be a million times better yeah. than them because they're just looking at you as whatever you bring on the paper." So that's what I'm saying, Tim, where it was like, I love to see people give it up to people that have come before them. Like she just drops crazy science about, about the reality of sports, mm -hmm. about the reality of what it is to be judged for your physical attributes and how you fit into a game plan to win mm -hmm. only. You're not a human yeah. being. No. Your physical attributes and how you fit into a game mm -hmm. plan to win only. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, That's why I'm glad I'm little, bro. You're, you're a fool. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, shit, man. You know your um, lane, though. You know your lane. I'm, I'm, you know your I'm lane. here. I'm here. Uh, I'm going to eat some food with you, man. We no, can we, eat some food with you, man. We will, bro. Let's like, look. Adventure and stuff and just. I'm down, dog. Once everything starts opening up, you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Let's do it. I, I appreciate you coming to the podcast. That had to happen. Uh, we'll definitely uh, eat and drink soon once we're allowed to. Uh, anything you want to plug before we close this thing up? You know, actually, I have a podcast that I'm actually launching uh, in uh, in probably about a couple weeks. Oh, uh, it's called Ever After. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's child actors, former child actors that have successfully transitioned to adulthood in the okay. business, oh, yeah. having a conversation with each other. It's been fantastic. Okay. Um, I um, I spoke with Raven Simone first. Oh, shit. Um, I had a conversation with Seth Green, mm. uh, Mr. Scott Evil. People don't re realize how long he's been around in the mm. business. Um, I had an incredible conversation with uh, with Kiki Palmer wow. um, just the other day. Uh, I'm talking to Haley Joel Osment on Monday. Wow. Um, and I just think it's going to be a really fun lineup for people who are considering putting their children in the business mm -hmm. or want something a little more in depth than, oh, that one got on drugs. Right. Like, yeah. you know, I'm like, our, our business has a lot of amazing layers that you have to navigate and survive to be successful. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I talk to one of them, it's almost therapeutic. Right. It's like, and Kiki will say something and I'll say, this. she's like, I would do the same thing. I was like, I already knew, baby. That's why I hit you, <laughs> That's why I hit you up. <laughs> so uh, it's called Ever After and uh, I'll be dropping that podcast soon. Um, very soon and just look for it on my either my Instagram or just in social media or just Google it. You just gotta Google stuff. For sure. Well that's dope. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you, bro. Hey, thank you. All right, y'all. Well, hey, thanks for listening to another episode of No Chase Podcast. I'm Tim Chantaranzu. I'm Ricky Shuck. I'm Nikki Blade. Bye. I'm Jaleel White. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody's like, what about me? Yeah. <laughs>